Yeah, once uh, once you have a printer dialed in, as they say, then you can see that the uh, the first layer goes down really smooth. Right now we're on the second layer of this uh, two-piece print. Uh, you can see out here, there's, there's actually two lines out here. I intentionally add this little square on the inside just to the outside of the original print because I kind of wanted the skirt to actually go around the entire perimeter of the, uh, the print area. And that way I can see if it's properly uh, trammed uh, all the way around. Usually uh, a skirt will follow uh, the print itself, so it would have been like a kind of a figure eight thing going there. But uh, I just wanted to show, you know, that uh, you know a well as assembled printer, properly assembled printer, uh, can actually print well. Uh, obviously, the first thing would be to have uh, the bed, uh, the print surface, properly trimmed. You don't need any electronic gizmo because technically you can uh, uh, manually tram the bed. Uh, using uh, uh, one of these. This is a paper feeler gauge. This is old school uh, because it works. You know, you might as well not try to reinvent the wheel uh, with electronic gizmos because, you know, basically you can't figure out how to tram uh, the bed with a piece of paper. Um, so basically what, what happens here, you can see this is a, a stock straight out of the box uh, print head. Nothing fancy about it, not direct drive. I don't have uh, dual Z ac uh, axis up here. Um, there's nothing hanging on uh, the print head at all. It's just the, the basics of printing. You have the filament going in from the Bowden tube delivery into a heat sink and down onto the table. So it's literally straight through. Uh, nothing between here and there to interfere with the delivery because it's Bowden. So you don't need uh, anything hanging on here either to add weight to the print head. You see right there, there it is, never before seen, that's a plastic extruder. Uh, all my printers, I have four of them, use the plastic extruder body. If that arm ever cracks, I mean I can literally take that arm now, smash it with a hammer, add another handle or, uh, arm right there, lever, and it'll print just like it is now. So I don't have to do any calibrations or e-step changes or anything to disrupt uh, the function of the printer. Uh, basically, everything that happens with the aftermarket extruders seem to uh, uh, cause problems, which will never happen to this extruder here. So I prefer just to keep the body. It's perfect. It has no issues. Um, I mean, it's been four years. Uh, so just change the arm, change the lever, and you're back to printing. You know, why reinvent the wheel, as I say, uh, re, you know, remove and replace, okay, that's basically uh, the way you do it. Uh, you can see here the filament, there's no uh, guides, arms, levers, gizmos, pulleys, or anything like that to redirect the filament because I mount it right there, not up here. I just mount it here, the filament goes straight in, straight through, nice flow, uh, and uh, that's how this printer works. So there it is. So basically, a smooth, smooth surface um, right there, like uh, you know, just uh, the Goldilocks zone, as they would say. Uh, you can see also there's no uh, uh, curling, no lifting, no brim, no wrap, uh, no messy uh, glue stick, and the best of all, I'm not even heating the bed. You can see right there for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Right there, zero set point on the bed. Room temperature, 210 on the nozzle. This is PLA. Springs are what came with the printer. Those are not yellow springs. They're not chunks of rubber. They're just what came with the printer. They're properly set up as they're supposed to be, and there's no chance that knob will ever turn by itself. I've never ever seen the knob turn by itself because of this, the, the way that it prints. So anyway, that's just uh, the way my printer's set up. And there you go. All right. Happy printing.